Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Captain America, the first Avenger. This movie came out in 2011. And since I sat down to rewatch all the MCU movies, thanks to Disney Plus, <laughs> as I'm so well organized, um, I rewatched this flick and I was pretty surprised on how much I liked it. I'll tell you guys what I liked, what I didn't like. And um, first thing, first positive, Chris Evans as Captain America. He, he's fantastic. Does a really, really good job embodying this character. I can't imagine any other actor doing Captain America after doing this. Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. Reynolds with Deadpool. Like, I can't see any other, other person doing this particular character. So he just really kills it. Let's go into one negative. We're going to do one and one, as I always do. And I'm not going to summarize the movie. Like, just go watch the flick. Like, it's been out for a real long time. I don't know why. I forgot the name of the director. I didn't put it in the notes. I'm going to probably put it on the screen. Why the director would montage his way through World War II, it's just beyond me. Like, when I saw that part of the movie, it's like, oh, my God. There's so many great battles that they sort of tease there. They're like, no, I would have wanted to see that. I got, in, I got to see all the extras of the movie and there was a bunch of outtakes of this giant tank destroying stuff that we don't get to see <laughs> in the movie. And I just don't know why they didn't incorporate that gigantic monster tank that the Red Skull was using to flatten these cities. Back into the positives. The movie does a fantastic job in showing how Steve Rogers is a guy that he's very noble. He's all heart. Do the right thing. He wants to fight for his country. The dude has like this unbreakable will. He's totally willing to uh, sacrifice himself. There's this one moment in the movie where Tommy Lee Jones throws a grenade and he throws himself on top of the grenade. And I thought to myself, wow, that's so well written, that part of the movie. Like at the end, you have spoilers, spoilers. Cap sacrifices himself. So he crashes that, um, that Nazi hydra nazi plane into the arctic uh he sacrifices himself to save all a bunch of people but before that that scene with the grenade was really awesome it just really sells you the idea of that steve rogers is a guy he's selfless and he's willing to sacrifice himself to protect everyone back into the negatives and we're going to go all the way to the back of the movie because it's one of the things that most stands out the most to me that left me scratching my head the final battle between captain america and red skull it's not very good. I really don't... The third act has so many issues with this movie. I have so many issues with the third act of this movie. Uh, that final battle is, it just leaves a very bittersweet taste in your mouth. Like, I like the idea it gets teleported away, but the battle itself just wasn't that interesting. Back into the positives, I really liked Bucky. Sebastian Stan really kills it as his character, and every time he... he and the, the movies that come after this... That character just gets better and better. I like seeing a Bucky that's older, not a 16-year-old psychopath that's <laughs> in the army. Like Bucky as a character, if you read some of the, the stories, he's like he's a he's a young kid and he's totally unhinged a lot of times. An older Bucky and the friendship, like you can really feel like these guys are friends. Bucky is always out to protect his buddy Steve Roger when he was more he was more of a weakling. Goes out into battle to try to save his friend who was captured by Hydra. So that relationship between both of these characters, it's really good. And it's very well done. And we get to see this evolve in further movies. Because obviously when you see um, Bucky fall off the train, you know that you're, we're, we're going to get the Winter Soldier after that end of, <laughs> of Bucky. I was whining about the third act battle at the end of the movie. Um, some of the action and the, like, there's moments it's really good and they do a fantastic job showing off how much of a badass Captain America is. And other moments, it feels a little bit wonky and not the best. <laughs> Creative decisions in some of the battles that just really didn't work for me. The positives, I really liked, uh, the incorporation of Howard Stark in the origins of Captain America in this movie. That's really good. I also liked how they sort of fuse... Hydra's uh, origins, well, the Red Skull's origins with Asgard. That was uh, actually sort of an interesting idea. And actually, um, 
has an effect within the normal Marvel universe, the comic books and Marvel 616 universe. You started to see this overlap between Asgard and Hydra and Nazis and stuff like that within the respective histories, especially with the Fear Itself crossover. I really didn't like the montage of um, Red Skull's origins. It really didn't work for me. Uh, that's the director for me did a really bad job with that. But I did like you weaving as the Red Skull. I think he, he interprets the character. A very irredeemable character. Like he's evil through and through. There's nothing you can empathize with Red Skull. Now, there's no more negatives after that. Um, I loved Cap's costume. It looked really awesome. And to the point that it sort of left me scratching my head. When the, we had the Avengers movie. The costume that they used for that movie. And why they didn't use this type of costume that he was using in this movie of the shield was really awesome seeing him throw that shield bouncing off stuff that was really interesting Peggy Carter I love the way uh, this character is interpreted I don't I forgot to write down the name of the actress sorry sorry and uh, I actually liked the Peggy Carter um, TV series I thought it was really interesting much better compared to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That show was unwatchable, at least for me. And the whole plot twist at the end that Captain America is brought to the, into the present. Um, I sort of thought of that coming because it's a basic part of Captain Cap's mythos. But I did see this movie with someone that wasn't familiar with that. And that person is like, wow, I didn't see that coming. And they do it in a pretty interesting way. So I'm going to tally up positives and the negatives put you guys give you guys the, the grade my personal grade for this movie and then later on rank it with other marvel movies so i hope you like this video see you guys next time